agricultural lands were submerged. Urban cities were submerged. Lives were lost. Thank goodness, the impact on agricultural production was not too much. But it demonstrated really what could happen when we do not pay attention to the issues of environment and climate change. It was, in this, it was for this reason, Mr. Vice President, that the issue and, of environment and climate change preoccupied a good number of professionals in this audience today over the last two days. And at the end of the interaction we had there, we came up with these recommendations. And that is the need to disseminate geospatial data for climate smart agricultural investment. This is the practice in most advanced countries. And we believe that our meteorological agencies are already trying. For instance, it was not as though these agencies did not predict the floods that we saw last year, but our people simply failed to listen. So clearly, we must find a way to really encourage our people to enlighten them further and for them to know that these information are critical information. And therefore, to devise a way of really taking them out of harm's way as is the case in the more advanced countries. In order to ensure sustainability, we also propose that we must continue to adopt policies which will encourage the utilization of renewable energy sources for farm and household uses. The matter of synergy amongst the various ministries was vigorously canvassed, and therefore, we would like to recommend that the ministries of environment, agriculture, water resources, industry, trade, and investment must continue to work very closely together in order for us to attain this national aspiration. The last but not the least, Mr. Vice President, is the need for our country to develop climate index for farm insurance purposes. That way, the, financial, the financial institutions, insurance companies, the farmers themselves have a good sense of what the rain, uh, rainfall patterns might be, whatever kind of you know, disasters might be looming, and therefore better price the risks associated with lending over any particular period. We had listened in the last hour and 15 minutes to the session on sustaining the agricultural transformation agenda. In our view, this is perhaps the most important aspect of what we've tried to do in the last three days. Because I'd like to suggest that all of the initiatives that we're talking about today are not entirely new in our country. Nigeria's economy was once underpinned by agriculture before the advent of oil. And the Minister of National Planning took us through that, you know, our history, agricultural history, so to speak, when he, um, uh, at the opening ceremonies on Tuesday. The question that occupied our mind as we planned to have this summit was, how do we ensure that in another two years, five years, or even ten years, we do not return to this room or indeed to other parts of the country to begin to discuss exactly the same things. We've, we, we, we recall Operation Feed the Nation. We recall the Green Revolution. We recall the series of presidential initiatives, even in the cabinet in which I served. What is different this time around? How, why did we forget those initiatives? Why did they fail? And we thought, Mr. Vice President, that we should have this conversation. And it was very interesting listening to the broad, sec uh, broad, broad section of stakeholders on that panel and what they had to say. We're particularly happy again, I can't stop saying this, that some members of the National Assembly are in the House, again, the commitment made by the gentleman who spoke, that the legislature is prepared to join us in this conversation and to provide legislative backing to aspects of the ATA which would need legislation. And so, part of what we're going to do is to continue to work. We're not going to lose heart. That in spite of the considerable difficulties we have experienced in engaging the National Assembly, we're not going to give up. 
because they are representatives of, our, of, of the people. And therefore, we would continue to engage them to make sure that legislation, as it relates to the ATA, these things come through when they should. A very important aspect of all of these conversations, Mr. Vice President, ladies and gentlemen, is the issue of citizen ownership of the agricultural transformation agenda. The tendency for us to see government policy as government business. No, 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 let them do it. It's their business. Let them just do it. Policies are meant for the people. And unless the people embrace these policies in a responsible manner, then these policies are no use. I believe that we'd like to encourage Nigerian citizens, entrepreneurs, women, youth, to embrace the agricultural transformation agenda for what it is and to really mobilize understanding behind this agenda, mobilize interest and participation behind this agenda, because we believe it is in our national interest. <clears throat> Mr. Vice President, over the last 15 years, the government of Nigeria has embarked on various privatization of various sectors of our economy. The telecom sector is one of the most highly celebrated. The hospitality sector, one in which we now sit, has been fairly successful. The port concessioning system has also been fairly successful. We believe that it is important for the private sector to be in the forefront of the sustainable implementation of the agricultural transformation agenda. In this respect, the issues of management of infrastructure through public-private partnerships, the expansion of innovative financing strategies, partial risk guarantees, we believe this is something the private sector should drive. The matter of increase in investment across the entire agricultural value chain. More importantly, the, manage the management of the commodities exchange, which we have vigorously canvassed for. We also believe, Mr. Vice President, that it is important to set up a monitoring and evaluation process to measure the progress of the agricultural transformation agenda. The NESG has developed a framework, a scorecard, to track progress on the agricultural transformation agenda. And it is a scorecard that we're going to be publishing from time to time to underpin our own commitment of our understanding of our responsibility as a private sector and to ensure that we do not, that the ATA does not end up like other agricultural initiatives before it. <clears throat> Mr. Vice President, the last point I'm about to make in conclusion is the matter of institutions. The matter of institutions. During the presidential policy dialogue, someone asked the president, I think it was the anchor that said, Mr. President, great vision. Yes, very enthusiastic support and engagement with Nigerian citizens. What's going to happen after you? And he made what we considered a very profound statement that his administration will continue to work to develop institutions in Nigeria. And it was a key outcome of the presidential policy dialogue. Mr. Vice President, we all love the Minister of Agriculture. Very dynamic, very passionate, very knowledgeable, a thoroughbred professional. He has a great team. As we worked day and night to piece the agenda for this summit together, we were not in doubt in any way whatsoever about his passion his knowledge and his commitment to Nigeria and the commitment of his team as well. The challenge which we had privately and what, which we discussed at the highest levels of the NESG was what happens after Akin Adishina? What happens after President Goodluck Jonathan?
this recommendation